All right, we're here with Lauren Cabello. You might have seen her on TV, on her Instagram, her Twitter. She is the money queen about budgeting and saving and finding ways to save the extra penny and figure out how to have extra money at the end of each month and how to do it from the perspective of a single mom with four kiddos. So Lauren, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So excited you're doing this. I'm so excited. I know. So, I mean, for those that don't know, which is like everybody, because I don't talk about it. Uh, <laughs> so the whole reason I have a podcast is sparked because of Lauren, right? So I, when was this? Like February, maybe January, February timeframe of mm -hmm. this year, you you reached out and you're like, oh, I love, you know, your videos are, you know, are this and that. And, you know, what are you doing with, with your, with your social media? Like, do you have a podcast coming? Like, what's your plan here, buddy? And, uh, and it was, it was, you were reaching out on a, on, on, on pure, just like curiosity and wanting to help. Uh, it was very genuine. And so you invited me to go to PodFest, which is a podcasting conference. And it was in Orlando, Florida last, this, this past year. And, uh, and, and you started sharing your experience and your friends' experiences of, you know, online business and, and all things social and, and TV and all that stuff. And so it really got my brain going and I'm like, God, like what? why am I making these videos and what am I, what am I doing? Right. And so it just started the conversation. Uh, and I go to, I go to PodFest. I literally, I booked the flight. <laughs> I honestly, I never told you this, but I honestly booked the flight in the hotel, uh, to literally keep you in my corner as long as possible. <laughs> so, Cause I was like, I, you know, she's like, she's, she's spitting so much information at me that I know is so valuable. And I, and I just, I, I'm eating it up and I love it. And the moment you invited me to PodFest to meet you, your friends, and all the things, I, uh, I was like, I got to do it because I don't know what the hell I'm going to learn, but I know it's things that I want to know. And so I booked it like immediately. I'll figure out the details later. And, so <laughs> and then I couldn't go. And then I, I can't go. Fun fact. Somebody Fun fact. On me. <laughs> Mike got ghosted. No, it was, there was a legit reason why I couldn't make it. It was just really unfortunate but I believe you no <laughs> no it's stop <laughs> okay wait before you get started i have to say the reason why i found you right um mm -hmm. i actually was on it so i'm a single mom right i was on a dating site last year okay and i don't usually like those but i i was you know i signed up for one or whatever and sure. this guy that i had given my phone number to which was rare started sending me all of your videos on TikTok. That's right. <laughs> and so that's how I found you. And I'm like, I love this guy. Like everything you make is so relatable to us as like single parents. And then I was like, I don't think he's making any money doing this. And that really <laughs> irritates me. So I'm like, I'm going to reach out to him. And you have so many Instagram followers or TikTok followers. I was like, yeah, he might not even like respond. Um, because I mean, I know my inbox on Instagram is flooded, right. And it takes me a long time to get through them. Um, but I'm like, I'm just going to reach out because you know what, like this guy's really doing some amazing stuff. And if he's not monetizing, like I'm going to get him to make some money. Cause this is just ridiculous. So that's why I reached out to you. No, no intent. You know, a lot of people reach out cause they have like businesses to sell or whatever. Sure. I just was like, if this guy's not making money, like. That's crazy. He's going to, I'm going to teach this guy how to make some money. <laughs> so yeah, that's absolutely. where that came from. Well, me, Ellie and I, thank you for your service. I'm in the, yeah, I'm in the, in the middle of, of figuring that out, how to, how to make money with all this social stuff. Like kind of, I've got some things figured out, but not, I wouldn't say figured out. I've, I'm further along in the process and some, some respects than, than others, but still loads to learn. No, it, it didn't. So that guy, what were the videos he was sending you that I, that I make? They were the ones of you when you have like the strobe light, right? Uh -huh. Like, um, what it's like to date or going uh -huh. dating apps, you like dance and there's like a strobe light. And then one of them, you were like dancing on your counter, like ghosting. And you know what, you know which ones I'm talking about? Oh yeah. The emotional, I think it was the emotional damage Emotion series. That's what it is. Emotional damage that he kept on sending those to me. And listen, I never went out on a date with this guy. That was oh. that I never actually went out on a date with him. I wasn't interested in him, oh, but yeah. I, I said, cause I'm very picky. Like if I'm going to date somebody, like they got to have this, you know, I've been through enough. I know what I want. And, uh, so he's, he, he didn't, I never, he never didn't make the cut, but he introduced me to you. So I'm happy with that <laughs> or your so videos nice. at least. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, guy who didn't meet the cut for Lauren. I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how you got introduced. And then, yeah, you know, it was at PodFest. So PodFest, you didn't end up going. I ended up meeting other people there. Like the first table I sat at, someone else was walking in, Simona, who is actually the one who helps produce this podcast. She helps the, with the editing. She helped me with the with the launch that's happening and like just like this microphone, why I bought this one, like all the things, right? So she's who I met uh, at PodFest. And it was, I think she was the, she was the first person I met because we walked into the same event and I was sitting at like this large 10 top table just by myself, but like ready to network, like the energy you need to like be extroverted, which is sometimes <laughs> draining for some of us introverts, but <clears throat> I can turn it on. And so I was like ready to turn it on and just like, okay, I want to talk to people tell them what's up, say hi, like ask their story, all the things. And so she walks in and I can see that she's kind of aimlessly walking, like with no one with her. And like, I'm like, oh, she's by herself. I'm like, do you want to sit here? I think I asked her if she wanted to sit here. Either way, she sat down at my table and just started, she's super outgoing and like she thrives on it. And so like that helped me because she would take control of the conversation a little bit, but she's like, yeah, I'm a podcast producer. And I was like, oh, I don't have a podcast. Don't sell me. You know? <laughs> and so she's like, <laughs> she's like, oh, you know, but then her and I kind of stuck, stuck together throughout the throughout the whole conference and then met up with a few others and we actually still do a little weekly semi-weekly uh meetup virtual meetup touch base and say you know hold each other accountable for the goals that we kind of set at the conference and so uh that's what's come of it and then that's opened me up to other conferences so i went to vidcon uh down in la and that was that was a great one it's a, it's a creators conference that was amazing uh, and now I'm going to go to FinCon, finance, the finance conference Woo! Yay! with you. We'll see if you or I ghost. I'm one of the keynote speakers. I can't. I'm getting paid to do this. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So yeah, good for you. That's awesome. That's amazing. That'll happen before this even gets gets live on as a podcast. But uh, so I'll see you here in a few weeks, two weeks. Next week, Mike. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in eight days. It is like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> What I like to talk about at What's Next, the podcast right here, is I like hearing uh, stories where where you've maybe struggled or you've come to a realization where you want to do more or you feel stuck. So you're either getting pushed in one direction because, because you don't like what's behind you or you're getting mm -hmm. pulled in one direction because you love what's in front of you, right? So I know some of your story, because you're very public and open with it uh, on, on, on all your... TV show appearances like Rachel, like where are all the shows you've been? Today's show, Ray, Good Morning America, Doctor Oz, Fox America. News, CNN, Nightline. No, I'm not too. Not I'm not as Dateline risky for Dateline yet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, fair, fair enough. All right, I'll write that down. Here, hold on. Yeah, uh, yeah. All the stuff, all the things. That's amazing. It's just like a. It's just a thing that most people. It's a small. It's a neat, smaller niche community of who who goes and does these things and talks about these things and. Uh, but what I've come to realize talking with you more and more is that is that, you know, people that you see on TV, such as yourself, uh, there's so many things to your story that are exactly, you know, are very relatable to people that I see coming in my DMs, in the comments, my own story. Uh, and so some people sometimes it's like when you see, let's just say like a big billionaire, some big billionaire, and they're saying, you can do what I do. Mm -hmm. And it seems so far fetched because it seems so far away that you immediately like self eliminate and, you know, and, and, and say, I can't do that. Like there are so many steps between where I'm at and that person. But what I've learned from your story is that, and, and from talking to, you know, other big creators and, and other people in the space, it's not that far away. Like it's not, it's not easy, but it's, everything's hard. That's worth having, I think. But like, it's, it's very doable, very attainable and, and yeah. So what was something that's happened in your life that you'd like to share about that you felt compelled to either get pushed? Oh man, there's, there's a, there's a lot there, direction. Mike. That's a big loaded question. Um, I think one of the biggest <laughs> things for me was going through the divorce with my kid's father. So little background. Um, I, the talk that I'm giving at FinCon is actually kind of about this, right? So I started my career as an online personal finance educator back in 2008. It's like, I feel like I'm a freaking dinosaur in this industry, you know? Um, and the goal of that was <laughs> to 
be able to stay at home with my kids and not have to get another job because I was in a lot of debt still. So I thought, okay, I'm going to start this side hustle website, learn how to make money at it, and then use that money to pay down debt, and then I can be at home with my kids. That was always my, my, my overall goal. And then about six years after that, I find myself in a 1,200-square-foot office building with five employees. I retired my husband from his career in corporate America. I was on a Today, you know, a Today Show appearance every month. I was doing national television you know, every month, sometimes twice a month. I wrote a book. My website was doing amazing. You know, I was making like sometimes fifty to sixty thousand dollars a month on my website. Um, on the outside, it looked like I had it all together, right? It looked like I was so successful. Mm -hmm. But what people didn't know is that I felt like I had built this prison around myself, a prison of unhappiness, because now I have a nanny, a full time nanny. You know, I started my website with um, two kids and then I had four. So my younger two were, you know, raised by a nanny during the day so I could go out and work. And I found myself living this life that I didn't want. I didn't, I didn't want this career. I didn't want to be building a seven figure business. I didn't want to be away from my children during the day. Um, I didn't want for them to spend all summers with a nanny instead of with me, you know, when they were off school. And I was miserable, like to the point of being suicidal. I, mm -hmm. my marriage was falling apart mm -hmm. because us working together just exacerbated the issues that we already had. Um, we are now constantly by each other. And so my marriage was falling apart. I separated from my husband and now I'm going through a divorce and I'm a single mom. And one of the biggest things during that time that I kept on saying to myself was I have one life, one life to make, to be happy and to do the things that I want to do. And I'm in a very unique position where I've built this business and I'll be damned if I live the rest of my life miserable. I had felt stuck, mm -hmm. but I wasn't stuck. I was just unwilling to make the changes that I needed to make to be happy. So I gave myself the permission to be happy. That meant leaving a marriage that I wasn't happy in. I actually took two years off of working on my website completely. And it supported me financially, which was a blessing. I didn't have to like work, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I just really right. had to redefine what was next in my life. You know, what was I going to do with the rest of my life that brought me joy? because I was sick of being so miserable. So that's kind of the big thing that I would love to talk about was what happened after that. You know, how did I redefine my life? What things did I change? You know, and I'm still a single mom. My kids are older now. My youngest is nine. My oldest is 17. And I still work this full time. And I have a part time job for fun because that brings me joy. Um, so yeah, that's just like a little yeah, background of what I think would be powerful to talk about. Yeah, no, I, that's, I, I really appreciate you sharing all that. That's, it takes a lot to say those things, right? Cause it, it's very personal talking about divorce and, and, and personal struggles and, and any issues you have going on. And I, you know, that's, that's, so thank you for that. Uh, a lot of the things you mentioned, I think are super relatable to a, a lot of people. I really believe that. And so what I, you know, what, what I hear that stands out, that's very interesting is a lot of people, who are trying to strive for more or have big goals, you know, sometimes or a lot of those times those goals are mm -hmm. financially measured, right? So like how much money are you making? How much money do you have? And what kind of job are you doing? Uh, and so you're making, you know, more, a lot of money per month, you know, all the things you're doing, the courses, the books, the speaking, the, all the things. What, I guess let me ask, what was pulling you to, to become so successful in that? So at first you mentioned it was wanting to be able to stay at home with kids so you started a side hustle. Well, so excuse me, you started a side hustle to pay off like your debts and the side hustle turned into a full time mm -hmm. gig that turned into a full time, very successful business. And so it started as a way to get rid of the debt, which I think a lot of people do those things, right? They had they, had, yeah, they drive for Uber, they sell things on eBay, they work a second job as a whatever somewhere else part time, uh, they freelance, they do whatever. Um, 
as a, as a part-time thing to pay off or do something. And yours turned into a full-time gig that was super successful. What do you think was the transition from, oh, this is a part-time gig to, oh, this is like a full-time successful business. Once you realized it was a full-time successful business and you're, you know, you retired your husband, what kept you, why did you want to keep so I think going down that direction? I got addicted to more. That makes sense. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I got addicted to like, oh, 100%. <laughs> oh my gosh, like I got on this show so I could get on this show and this show brought in, you know, 200,000 people to my website that day, which equated to this much in sales. So if I get on this show and, and right. I think that I, I just could see how successful I could be. Right. And I, I stopped mm-hmm. thinking about the reason why I started what I was doing and and I, I thought, okay, well, this is just the next level in it, you know, and I'm a competitive person. I'm, I'm, I'm like an all or nothing person, or I used to be, I'll say I used to be back then. Right. I've worked on that through therapy, but one of the biggest things that right. I would do, um, after my divorce and all of that, I made my like goals and my life goals and my why like super clear. Like I want to work 20 hours a week. I want to be I don't want to work in the summer. So how do I plan my business around my life goals and what I want my life to look like? And that was totally opposite of the way it was before. I totally understand that. And so it became competitive. It became like, what's the next thing I can do Mm -hmm. more and more and more it's working. And then you started, then you started having this trapped feeling because I, you didn't say it, but I, this is what I'm hearing is that almost like a sense of duty to help pay, you know, for the nanny, for an assistance, for the employees. You're like, well, I'm shoot. I'm, I'm supporting them through my business. I, I gotta, Mm -hmm. I gotta pull through and, and show up for them. And if that, even if that means, right. And my husband had quit his job. I was the sole breadwinner and he quit like a a very well paying job. You know, he was making almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And so now I am the sole breadwinner of the family and I have four other employees to pay and it became a prison of like, okay, now I have to make this money, right? Because there's no other money coming in. And that was really difficult for me. But I think that the, the big turning point for me, honestly, was probably about two years ago. I went back to work, um, after taking Mm -hmm. a few years off and I was able to, it was almost like I had a resentment towards the business after when I started going back because I, I was, I was angry at what it had done to me, you know, what the success had done to me. And so I had to really work through that, that process and really redefine what this is going to look like moving forward. How much time do I want to work? What are the emotional boundaries that I'm willing to work through? And, um, one of the big things that happened actually this past summer was I just realized like I cannot work by myself behind a computer anymore. Like I am an extrovert to the core. Like I need people. Um, (laughs) And so I went back to my old career before having kids, which was bartending. And I started bartending again. And I'll tell you, the struggle, the internal struggle of like going from, I think I'm this like, you know, years ago, like this big TV star who's on TV all the time to now I'm bartending. That was hard. I had to give myself permission again to do something that made me happy, which is being around people. And you know what? Like the bartending job that I have, like I make really good money at. So like I'm making money, which is helping me with my retirement. Um, And I'm having a blast, but I had to let go of that vision of who I thought I was years ago Cause I had made this my whole identity of like, I'm Lauren and I am the budget person who goes on the today show, the Rachel ratio. Like that was my identity and to like, let go of that and be humble enough right. to try something new again. That was kind of empowering for me. Oh, it's huge. So it's what I love is that you started as a side hustle. It turned into the full-time gig and you started going for it, right? You, it's, it's, it's almost like a dream people have or a goal they typically have, but they never really act on it. Or if they do act on it, they, they act on it only a certain amount and they get to a whatever hurdle or roadblock and they just kind of stop. 
I'm, I know you encountered hurdles and roadblocks and, and fires you had to put out along the way to to the point that you got with your business. And so you traveled down that path of like going for your dream, going for your thing, right? It started as a side hustle, but you're like, I think this is my dream. I'm having a fun doing this. I'm liking this. And you travel down that path so far until you realize you're like, I don't like this path anymore, right? Or I don't like how this part of the path mm -hmm. looks. I need to do a I need to adjust. I need to recalibrate, re-aim. And then you did. <laughs> and then you and then you have re-aimed, right? You've you've recalibrated, which which a lot of people never get to mm -hmm. that point because they never even start. Seemingly you've you've relearned what you really want, right? And you never would have learned what you really want, which was even small things of just like being around people and, and the working the twenty hours a week and summers off. Like that was mm -hmm. that was like the real goal. And you wouldn't have never come to that realization had you not traveled down that yep. first path super far, right? It's like this whole social media thing with me when people ask questions of like, why are you doing videos and why are you doing what you're doing? You were a police officer before and then you were in mortgages and you do real estate investing. Why videos? And it's, it's, it sounds similar to your path. Like I walk through a door, I, I see a hallway of mm -hmm. more doors that I did not even know existed. I'm like, oh man, this is kind of a cool hallway. Let's check it out. Let's go down this hallway. And then you start and then like, well, this door looks pretty cool. Let's go. <laughs> oh shit. This, this is a cool door. Mm -hmm. Like let's, let's go down, let's go in that door. Right. And, but like, and the point is I would have never known these, you know, you're never going to know what those doors, what's behind those doors or what hallways are behind those hallways, but you know, like this never ending thing of doors, you'd never know until you walk through that first one. And for you, your first door from your mm -hmm. story is, is starting that side hustle, right? Right. The original goal was to just pay off debt, which feels good. And is super helpful. Like you, more cash flow per month. You can, you can breathe, you can maybe do more things, save more, invest more, whatever else you want to do. But now you have options. Um, and so your first door was start a side hustle. Uh, and, and then you felt, but it led to you figuring mm -hmm. out what you really really want. And I'm sure once you, as you are, and once you are getting what you want, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm imagining it's going to adjust again. How do you handle that adjustment? Like, I mean, you, <laughs> you kind of mentioned it, like you just, you, you, you accept it. You give yourself space. You humble mm -hmm. yourself to be like, this is okay. This is what I want. You mentioned therapy. How do you, that's, do you that's actually a really good question, Mike. And I think for me, I have always had this like dreamer mentality and also kind of like an entrepreneurial brain, but I also don't want to be miserable. I just don't accept it. I guess. I don't know why I've just always been, I want, I want to do and be full in myself. Right. So I think that mm -hmm. the basic principle of everything that you just said is that if you believe that you are stuck in your current situation without any options, that's the first problem. Okay. Because when I was going through, I mean, I was married to the kid's dad for 16 years. So it was a long time. We got married really young. I was married a long time. And it wasn't until the last couple of years of our marriage that things got really bad. Like I was really happy the first, you know, 12, 13 years of our marriage. Um, and then things got really bad really fast and I had to make a decision, you know, even after going through therapy and all of these things with him and with me and trying to figure out just accepting that things aren't going to get better and making a choice. And that is the way that I've, I've, I've faced everything that I, if I, if I think that I'm stuck, I've made myself a victim of my circumstance and I'll be damned if I'm a victim mm -hmm. Like I just have developed this mentality of like, I'll figure it out. You know, I will just figure it out and I would rather fail trying than not try it at all. A big life lesson and a big, um, thing for me in my life is regret. Like I don't want to regret not trying something. I would rather fail and get hurt than not try. And I hear so many times in when I'm doing financial counseling with people, you know, through my courses and all of that, um, 
this, this co- common concept of like, I don't have any choices. And it's like, nope, you've got choices. You're just afraid. And Always. what if we could remove that fear mm-hmm. and you could look at your life and you could design it exactly the way that you wanted it to be? What if? What would you do? I love all that. Like, so the, like the last part you just <laughs> so, so many things I want to talk about. <laughs> so like so many things. Uh, before I forget, because my brain is fantastical like that you said uh one quote that comes to mind to something you said a few sentences back was the regret thing so you you don't want to regret stuff and so like there's a quote man i I see this quote once in a while the expense i'm gonna butcher this people are scared of the expense it takes to get what you want but when they when they get the oh damn i fucked this up (laughs) post me in the show notes right around social media we'll get it (laughs) I, i need to like Damn it, I need to Google this. Yeah, where's the assistant? Do I have an where's assistant Mike's assistant? I know. Dang it. I t- it's so funny. So the whole the whole idea, it was so eloquently said when I'm like ruining it. It's so it's people are scared of like the amount of work it takes to do and reach the goal they want. Uh, and so they just don't mm-hmm. do it and they stay stagnant and content with where they're at. Oh, but when you get that when you get that bill for regret later in your life, it's way worse than the right. expense it takes to to do the things you want, right? Like that bill for regret is it's everything you get you get one life it's your whole thing um and then now i'm totally blank on the last thing well i was just talking about like that you're not stuck it's just that you have fear and if you could take the fear away and you could design your life the way you wanted it to look like what what would that be uh when people get stuck i like to say this to people who get stuck in that exact mentality um i can't do that it's like Mm -hmm. the idea of the uh the billionaire or whoever some something big they're so far away from where I'm at. How could I? I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Just imagine you could. Well, I can't. Just, just imagine you were a billionaire person. You had the mindset of, of a billionaire. Apply it to your scenario. What would you do next? Like, what would what would that billionaire do if they were in your shoes? Well, they'd they'd probably do. There you go. This. That's what you freaking do. Like that. Like that's what you do. Uh, you know, what would a smart person mm-hmm. do? Well, they'd probably oh. do fucking do that right and i did you know i have a podcast too it's called the hard money talk show and in that podcast i interview people who have i talk about like all the risky money conversations that nobody wants to talk about and one of the my favorite podcast episodes that i did was with um a financial therapist called ed combs and he talked about financial trauma as a childhood as a child and what that looks like as grown-ups right and so this This could be financial trauma. It could be any kind of trauma that you've experienced in your life or even just the way you were brought up. But how often the things in our mind that we are brought up with affect us growing up in life. Like I know from my childhood, just to be authentic, is that I was always told growing up, like, you're the social butterfly um, you're not very smart. Like you, you get okay grades, but you're like the pretty girl who like gets all the boys and you are the social butterfly. And that's, that's your job, you know, in the family. So I grew up like think mm-hmm. like not excelling at school. Like I was a solid C student, um, all through college, like almost flunked out of college the first couple semesters. Cause I was partying too much and I just love the mm-hmm. lifestyle. Um, and then I found a passion and it's like, it's not that I was ever dumb. I'm a hard worker and I'm smart as hell. I just didn't apply myself because I was told this all growing up. I had to realize for myself, oh no, like you are brilliant girl. Like you didn't just create this. I mean, my business has probably made you know, $3 million over the past couple of years, 4 million. I don't even know. You have created this incredible business that not only supported you and retired your ex-husband, but you also, because of how you built it, you were able to not work for two years and all of your bills were paid from this business. So like I had to like rewrite those beliefs that I had in myself and also the beliefs that I was taught growing up to move past that fear that I had. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that fear place where you just can't move on or you limited beliefs in yourself, you know? Yeah, the uh, the childhood thing is it rings so true to me. 
uh, so my dad was, he was in the Air Force just like I was. That's kind of one reason why I, I leaned that way. I understood how it worked, all the, all the details. And so he got out of the military, got his accounting degree, tried to be like a stockbroker, didn't really, wasn't really good at that. And then uh, my mom was a labor and delivery nurse. And so, and so she, so he, my dad then took up a school bus driving job because my mom got night shift for nursing, which paid more, which helped the family out. And so he took a school bus driving job to have time off for the four. There's four of us, four kids, uh, plus my uncle who's got Noonan mm -hmm. syndrome, which is kind of like down syndrome, but he was a, he's older. And so like he could take care of himself then, not so much now, but, uh, and so he was there in the same household. And so he needed to be around. He, my dad needed to be around for like sports to bring, just to travel kids back and forth from school. The age ranges were oh, mm -hmm. I think the eight years apart and there's four of us in there. And so he, but the money, the, the money talks that he would have, we actually had money talks, right? Which I think mm -hmm. is a, lo a lot of families don't, a lot of people don't. Uh, and so he was, he makes decisions from a place of scarcity and like, hold on to what you have, which is not, bad depending on what you're talking about and how you're talking about it right so every decision he made was scarcity right so it's it's you know we're middle class and so it's you know turn off the water turn off the lights let's get the cheaper thing let's get this which aren't bad things but he's he then applied that same concept to to nearly everything in life right so not just money um you know safe decisions very risk averse uh very conservative with with risk taking and and I think I get a lot of my mm -hmm. risk taking mm. because of that. <laughs> so like so like flipping houses, right? The first couple houses I did, I'm putting essentially all my money, you know, ninety percent plus of all the money I have to my name towards one project, right? Because it was what was required and it's what I had and I wanted to do it. Uh he would never do that. And I wouldn't recommend, you know, putting 90 to 100% now. But, but I also would recommend mm -hmm. at some point, you got to take a leap for certain things. So like, I would do it again, right? Like, even if I had failed, even through all my failures, I've learned so many things that mm -hmm. uh, you can make that money over, over and over again. I, I've had people, you know, there's conversations I've had where it's, you know, people think I'm motivated by money. And what if you lose your money? Like, exactly. like well, I can make it over again real fast. Like you just, there's, yeah, there's plenty to go around. But anyways, the childhood thing, as far as the scarcity mindset he has, uh, it definitely affected how I, affects how I look at money, how I look at decision-making. Um, and it's a real effect people should, should look at on themselves. Like, why do I think this way? Why do I have the fear to make this first step towards this thing that I want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, what did my, you know, what was my childhood like? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finding that childhood trauma you hear in you Get hear it. therapy and stuff. Like, therapy, <laughs> like it's my favorite thing in the world. It. You might need it. How, however you want to get, and you can get therapy through like, obviously paid one-on-one -on -one stuff. You can, you can get glimpses mm -hmm. of therapy by like from podcasts and, and from YouTube videos and TikTok. Yep. like you get, you know, different types of glimpses that aren't, aren't tailored for your scenario. But if you have like critical thinking skills, you can, you can mm -hmm. absolutely apply them. Yeah. And one of yours, the um, podcast degree. guests that I have coming up on this season of my podcast is he's a hospice doctor. And our whole podcast was talking about the things that he has heard as a hospice doctor while people are dying that have changed his life. Yeah. So if we can take I want to hear that, one. that information and like apply that to our life now so that we don't, you know, I don't want to be on my deathbed saying, I wish I had spent more time with my family. I wish that I had gone on that vacation. I wish that I wasn't so afraid. You know, I want to think like, I'm so glad that I had the courage to move forward. And, you know, I feel incredibly blessed that after my divorce, I was not a struggling single mom. I know there's a lot of single parents out there that struggle, but that reason why I didn't struggle was because I was, I've always been a hard worker and I've always been willing to make chances and take those chances. Cause I hear this a lot. Mm -hmm. I work hard. I work hard and I'm still stuck, which, which is frustrating for people. Like it sucks. And I've been there 
And so, uh, so I hear that part from you that you work hard, you're consistent, relentless. Uh, but then also what is not said a lot of times mm-hmm. is you're working hard towards what this is what I believe, right? Is so some people are, are in certain jobs where it's like a W two salary job, whether you work 40 hours or 80 hours, you're getting paid $50,000 a year, 80, whatever the number is. And, and so you, I don't know what, jo- what were you, what were you doing before? When you were doing this, what was your job? Like, um, I was a stay at home mom. Okay. So you, you started, yeah. So you're doing, you're doing your thing and then you'd start a side hustle in your free time, uh, away from your primary duties. And, and so you were working hard on mm. these things that make money. Right. So I think, you know, this is, this is at least what I recognize what I see. I, I when people have extra time and they, complain let's say or they're upset with their scenario as far as financial situation and their free time is you know not spent consuming information about how to make more money uh not for the fact that money is great but money is a tool and it'll help solve Mm -hmm. the problem it sounds like for that person right so if you have money pro if you have money problems you need money to solve it right Money, you know, and the money problems might give you the thing you want, which is 20 hour work week or having summers off or not having Mm -hmm. to watch what you pay for at the grocery store each month. So you can spend seven hundred dollars a month on food instead of five twenty five. And you're watching every little thing, right? That this breathing room. So if if people were to spend more time just, um, you know, focused effort on how to earn money in a way that they like. Right. Uh. It, it can it can help. Yep, so many and ways, that's but, that's one of the um, reasons why I was a yeah. bartender for many many years before I had kids, and even after I had my son, um, I so enjoy that job. I don't really enjoy getting people drunk. Um, I don't enjoy right. the alcohol part of it so much. I mean, it's an art for me to make like pretty mimosas and that kind of stuff, which I do on Sundays. But the place where I work is sure. like a family owned bar marina that everybody comes and sits down and eats dinner and I see the same people all the time and they become family and it gets me out of the house because I get depressed if I'm in my house too much by myself you know as a single parent like I have my kids only 50% of the time and I'm not a big bar person where I'm going to be going and like hanging out at the bars every night like so I got lonely you know and (laughs) Certainly dating is not the answer for me because, you know, with the content that <laughs> and what we've talked about, like, you know, I found I found myself getting into the dating pool because I was bored. And I'm like, that's not the right reason to date because um, I'm completely fine being alone and independent. And I'm like, you know, that for me was a big aha moment that like I'm not going in the right direction where I need to go. So let's go back to work. Let's go out of the house. Let me do something to make me happy to bring me joy. Cause although my career as a personal finance, you know, expert on my website is still there and I still work at it. Um, you know, it's, I've been doing it for so long. It sometimes doesn't bring me joy. However, it brings me a paycheck. So I still have to find the things that bring me joy in that. Like Video brings me joy. Writing does not. So I don't write any blog content anymore. I have people that do that for me. I do all of my own video um, Mm -hmm. and social media stuff. That brings me joy. Like everything else I have hired out. All of my email writing, all of my social media postings Mm -hmm. on Instagram. Um, I do a TikTok channel, which has absolutely nothing to do with my business at all. It has to do with like dating horror stories and like... (laughs) woman empowerment stuff. That's like a fun thing for me. It has nothing to do with my business. Yeah. Um, and that's what, that's what works for me. You know, we don't have to like mold into this, like what everybody yeah. thinks we should be doing for me when I, you know, we're t- you talk about what's next. So what was next for my business was these are the things that I absolutely love doing. These are the things that fill me up and bring me joy. These are the things that bring me down and deplete my energy. So I'm going to hire out all of those things that deplete my energy, like my podcast editing. Um, mm-hmm. I have an amazing executive assistant that does all of my emails and sales letters and blog posts and social media stuff, customer service. And then I do the things that fill me up. That's what brings me joy. I yeah. wish that everybody could live that way. Not to say it's perfect because what you don't see is all the failures that I've had. 
um, the tears, the the nose. Right. Um, you know, one of the biggest mm -hmm. disappointments of my career was when I wrote my book, which is right here. I got a, I got an amazing book deal with an uh, amazing <laughs> publisher in New York city. And, uh, they completely dropped the ball on yeah. marketing and completely dropped the ball on a lot of things. Oh, it was no. really mishandled. Um, and it didn't sell well. I mean, I got, um, Mm -hmm. Number one Amazon bestseller for a couple weeks. Um, but it should have been a New York Times bestseller with how the marketing plan was laid out and they completely mishandled it. So that was a big disappointment for me. And it's not even available for mm -hmm. sale anymore because I'm switching it to a different publisher. So like that to me, yeah, I wrote a book. It was a New York, you know, a number one bestseller. Yeah, but it That's wasn't, you know, it was mishandled. And it was a, a major disappointment for my career. But a lot of people like don't see that part, you know, that, um, that it was a, you know, I put my right. blood, sweat and tears into it. And, uh, my publishers just pretty much ignored it and didn't do anything with it, which sucks. So, you know, th that was a big note, you know, disappointment for me in, in that. So how do I move past that? You know, you just still be proud of it and that's right. okay. It, it is what it was. I know. Absolutely. You wrote a, you wrote a book. That's a lot of, a lot of people's like lifetime bucket list things mm -hmm. is I want to write a, write a book someday. And I ask those people, Oh, how come, you know, when are you going to start it? Yep. Uh, sometime in the, some, some, sometime. Like, yep. When? I mean, I wrote a book and I'm got a book busy. deal. That's pretty freaking amazing. So to start it. I'll take it. Absolutely. And it reminds me of, uh, I was thinking about like the, 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 the hallway and the doors opportunities, things and not knowing until you start. And there's a, there was this again, quote that I can't ever <laughs> say, cause I never remember anything in my brain is it was like a I'm scientist. scientist. We got it. So scientists. Okay. Hear me out. I got this. <laughs> I'm so smart. Uh, someone who solves or, or, or cures cancer. Right. Uh, I think it was like the pen is this, this the story about how penicillin was made, right? Scientists go in there. People think there has to be like a set steps, steps one through 10 to solve this problem, right? You want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month. There's, there's 10 steps to get there. I have to have them all laid out, ready to go. Perfect. And then I'll start step one. It's like, that's not, that's not how it's going to happen. Right. For example, scientists, how penicillin was made, uh, this is definitely, uh, summarized <laughs> was, um, their scientists go in there and they do, they run experiments and they try different things and they fail, they mishap, they, whatever they're going there to solve problem a, and then they end up solving problem G over here. Like, Oh shit, what is this? And so I think penicillin, the story was they were trying to s solve something else and then mold started to grow on their experiment. And they're like, what is, why is there mold? Like, what is this? And they, then they dissect it and they go into it and they figure out it's it's pen, it's either it, it was penicillin mm -hmm. or it was how they figured that that formula out but it was all by mishap and all by mistake and all by because they were trying this thing over here and this opportunity right here arose right and so you know same thing can be applied to to everything you don't know until you start trying stuff exactly because i didn't think when i started is. my business that right. i was going to suddenly be like a regular on the rachel ray show like that wasn't any bit a part of my plan right. at all like I just wanted like 200 bucks a month so I could stop couponing a ton and, you know, m double my grocery budget. Like that yeah. was never in my mind to do that. And because of my hard work, it, it happened. Right. Beast. But yeah. <clears throat> I just, if people could just try and somehow have some sort of, um, accountability, like that's why I love going to conferences and especially this FinCon conference is that these are my friends that I have been through this journey with for nine years and they get it and I can be raw and authentic and I can talk about my fears and, you know, find those people, find those people that you can be authentic with that say, you know, I'm scared shitless right now. I don't know how I'm going to do this and, and go from there mm -hmm. because I think so often we keep our fears and our shame and our embarrassment inside like I did when my life was falling apart on the inside, but it didn't look like it on the outside. I wasn't talking to anybody about it. You know, I was too embarrassed and that made yeah. me so depressed and miserable. So if people can find somebody, whether it's a therapist or even just a best friend to just 
talk about it, you know, it, it takes some of that power away. Yeah. That's it's yep. And so I, I like to, I like to end my, my interviews with, um, <laughs> A question that you kind of just answered, <laughs> kind of. So use it if you want. But you know, it, you know, if you had the ability. So whoever's listening to this podcast or this YouTube video, wherever I post this, <laughs> uh, who, if they're feeling stuck and they don't know what to do next, right? They're they're just they want to, but they just for some reason can't. What would you tell them? To help I think that get them. Out I would tell way? them to take it one step and one decision at a time. So. We don't get, what do they say? You can't eat an, you have to eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? You can't eat the whole thing in one sitting. So Mm -hmm. every time I tell somebody that it just starts with a decision that I am unwilling to live this way anymore. I'm unwilling to be unhappy. I'm unwilling to be stuck in this job. I'm unwilling to be stuck in this relationship. Um, It just takes a decision and then action. So, and it could be the smallest action. You know, a lot of my successes have come from taking a very small thing and doing it. And then the, the fulfillment and the excitement and the, how proud I am of myself from doing that one thing, it has a domino effect. So now I feel like, okay, I can do the next thing. Like I just, I just did this, um, and I can do this. So, and just to have that mindset that like, I'm going to screw up, but I'm unwilling to live this way anymore. So what's next? I got to take it one step at a time, one decision at a time. Not so some people like, if I had set out my business or my life to be like, I want to be on the today show. Like, I don't know if I would have started because that's just like so big, right? But right. it was like, I want to pay off $200 in debt a month. You know, that start, start small. Don't, you know, be all or nothing like I was. But I think if people just take it that one step at a time and one decision at a time, sometimes one day at a time, but the unwillingness to stay the same is, is really where you got to start. I love that. That's, I, I wrote down that last one, uh, this morning, one mm-hmm. of the Starbucks was take it one day at a time, right? One decision. Mm-hmm. I, I even like that one better. One decision at a time, right? The decision that I don't like where I'm at, mm-hmm. or I don't like this thing. Cool. What's yep. next? Bam. And yeah, it's it's it reminds me of like how I started doing videos and more mortgages, right? I just I started doing videos because of mortgages. All my content the early on. Oh, boring, Mike. I like your new stuff mortgages. right now. <laughs> and so I was. It was, but it, but it was still, it was still, uh, Oh, okay. I get it. I haven't seen any of the old lines, stuff. Right? I need to go back and watch that. <laughs> okay, good. I've deleted <laughs> none of them. <laughs> They're all there <laughs> Just scroll, scroll to the bottom. But, but that, but to, to what you said, one decision, one step at a time, mm-hmm. one bite of the elephant, right? You know, the very, for, for me, the decision was, well, do I want to leave being a police officer? I made the decision. Yes. Cool. What's next, right? Okay, I figured out what career. Okay, let's just start with this one. Try it. Bam, mortgages. Cool. How do I mm-hmm. become successful in mortgages? Define success. Okay, that's def- that's successful for me. I want to do that thing. How do I start? Ah, I got to market. Cool. What's the best marketing plan? Decide this one. Okay, I think videos. I got to post a video. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's let's post one video. The first video I posted, I remember I copied. Uh, and him and I actually follow each other now and like we message mm-hmm. back and forth periodically. His name is that mortgage guy and his name is brilliant. I think on, on the like, mortgage guy. Instagram. Yeah. Oh yeah. Name, but like, Oh, what's that mortgage guy's name? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> ah, there it is. I was like, ah, oh, fucking you're, you're so brilliant. And, uh, I, one of my first videos was copying exactly one of his videos. Uh, he was like, I think I can make this. And so I just wanted a task to be done. I can make this video. Like I could try it and I like try to copy and like, and I posted it. It's still up there. I gotta so go I, find it. You gotta post that in the show notes. We uh, gotta find that. It was like a, yeah, it was, I think it's like black eyed peas. I think it was black eyed peas. <laughs> and I had like wardrobe changes and like, you saw a, a glimpse of my character and like of, right. of me now, of which is like in all my videos. Cause I just don't care like what people think. And it's just like, bah, it's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, you saw like a small glimpse, but like, <laughs> uh, yeah, one decision, yeah. St- step one, start with one thing, one day at a time. 
Start yep. small and it and I, no effect. I I literally just, just did this I love that. this past month with my website name. Like I've been operating underneath Lauren Grootman dot com right. ever since my divorce. And that was mm-hmm. almost five years ago. And through a solo vacation that I took this month, I was struggling with why do I have such a disconnect with my brand and who I am? And it just came to me that I have to reclaim my website and my brand as who I actually am. And that decision honestly scared me because I thought, you know what, like my website income is probably going to go down because I'm now redirecting the URL and my advertisers aren't going to know the new URL. And I, you know, I might make, lose a lot of money in ads on my website. Um, People aren't going to know who I am. You know, I had all these objections in my head. But I was like, I cannot operate under two different people anymore, you know, because I go to like conferences and everybody knows me as Lauren Grootman, but my license says Lauren Cabello and, you know, my, everybody locally knows me as Lauren Cabello and that's who right. I introduce myself as. And it was like, I cannot operate this way anymore. Like right. I'm unwilling to do it. So the first step for me was changing the name and the next steps, yeah. I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm not exactly sure what that is. You know, I might, I'm, I want to add some different <laughs> yeah. content that's not so personal finance, some more like um, relationship stuff and like single mom stuff, you know. I don't know what that looks like yet, but all I know is that I was willing to, I, I was not willing to stay Lauren Grootman online anymore because that's not who I am. Good for you. That's awesome. So we'll see. That's good. I mean, that's great. I think we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. I it's, I keep sprinkling different content as well as as, as we've talked about before, mm-hmm. like dating, divorce, single dad stuff. Like, yeah, it's like the foundational uh, thing that helped me grow my accounts. But then, like, right. that's not. I don't date every day. <laughs> like, I <laughs> guys, I'll, I don't do it every. I don't have Ellie all day long. I have her forty four percent of the time, right? And so it's like I don't have her every single day. Uh, what else do I do? <laughs> so like, I'll start posting about that. I do real estate stuff. Mm-hmm. You do real estate? Like, what do you mean? Like, what does that mean, real estate? Like, well, I flip houses or I have Airbnbs. Like, what? Right. When like, when I'm, like when I'm not online all videos. day, a lot of a, a lot of people don't realize that we batch content that stuff too. So like, sometimes, yeah, <laughs> I used to I'm, be that I'm way. On the fly. So, like, there's, I'm still on the fly for the most part. Like, <laughs> Anyway, we'll talk so about that at FinCon about how you can batch uh, content and give yourself gotta, a little bit more time. <laughs> I yeah, I know the like I, I get know, it. I post on I inspiration know, a lot because when I get inspired, I'm like, I got it. Let's do it. Yeah, and I, I can only stay focused for so long. And then there's certain types of content that are higher effort and like are more draining to film and edit and all the things. And then there's like different mm-hmm. series or pillars of content you can do where it's easier to batch. So I went to LA. Uh, I'm trying to like wrap up this podcast because we're we're deep into it. But like, I was in LA, so on batch content real fast. Uh, uh, I was in LA with Matter Dating, which is the, the dating app I'm partner with for the past like ten months, and we're still working well together. And we went to me and another creator, mm-hmm. Emily King, went there. She's from New York, uh, <laughs> surprise. And we went in there and batched content. We got uh, we we interviewed sixty five different people on Venice Beach, Manhattan Beach, and Santa Monica Pier and uh just got all the raw footage right tons of interviews um and we have editors that are going to edit it i posted one yesterday for the first time that guy uh and so that's that's like a two-day sprint of batching content but like interview style interview style is very very batchable uh when i'm doing skits from like 2000s songs and movies like sometimes i don't Mm -hmm. i don't have the inspiration until I hear the song and I hear the song in the, in the gym yep. randomly. And I'm like, Oh, that's a good thing. I'll write that down. And then, yeah, I get it. I get I it. Batch that. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyways, anyways. All right. Lauren Cabello, you've been amazing. I can't wait to hang out with you here. Eight in days. Like, what was eight days. We said in, in uh, eight days, we're going to FinCon. We're going to learn all things mm-hmm. finance. You're going to speak, which is going to be amazing. I'm going to cheer for you no matter how many people are in the room. <laughs> Go Lauren! I know her. I no, there'll probably be about two thousand people in the room that day, so I'm pretty excited about it. <clears throat> Hell yeah! Don't yeah, watch watch us on TikTok. Content. We've got to make Don't a few worry. TikToks together. Uh, I I will not leave FinCon until I show up I'll, on your TikTok I'll, page. 
<laughs> All right, we'll 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 do something. <laughs> this hard. No pressure. It's hard, but coll collabs. Yeah, collabs are hard. Like they're not easy. <laughs> like it doesn't it doesn't fit well, my normal creative filter. Uh, like oh, we gotta we'll come up with something funny. funny. I'm sure we do. <laughs> like it'll be good, but. Again, thank you for being here. Uh, you've had I had a great, it's a great conversation. Lots of lots of great one-liners and, and and tidbits in here. I think are super. I'm so glad honestly. that you asked me to be on. I'm so excited to hang out next yeah. week, and uh, excited about your podcast. And I'm excited you're finally yes. gonna, you know, monetize and do all the fun stuff. Figure it all out. All right. Thanks again, Lauren.